Yo, Internet. It's been a bit. I've uh, been farting along with the uh, Fusion. I dropped the ball again, not getting enough footage at the last drift event in Phoenix. So, but bear with me. I got something brewing. We went to Erwindale recently, as some of you might have saw on other social platforms. Uh, but now, yes, the day has come. Those are a couple seats. Only one of them is going to fit in there. Because I've done the measuring. Might have seen in other episodes where I kind of touch base on the room that is like directly in front of where a seat would be, even the stock one, because of the roll bar, the main hoop in the cage. So I'm going to put one seat in the middle. So whoever's back there can man spread or do whatever and have room for their hooves. And there's going to be a lot of limited headspace. So I'm going to just throw the kids back there, or the kid. <laughs> so. I think what we're gonna do is show you what I have planned, how I'm gonna mount these seats and the harness bar I'm gonna build into the package tray area. And then I can finally button all that up because I've been waiting at such a void back there. You can take a look at it. And then I need to cut a little bit off the uh, inside door handles because you cannot open the rear doors from the inside because they hit the, uh, the main hoop again. So. Here we go. Okay, so got them out of the box. Some of you thrifty racers or gar guys might recognize them. They're just uh, NRG, not FIA certified or anything. And the front two seats are. Big reasoning about that is what was going through my mind was no one's gonna be in the back seat, let, even even the passenger seat if this car ever were to compete in a pro-am scene. Um, so I'm just gonna kinda give you an overall feel of what I think about these, uh, kind of in real time, unedited. So in the back, let's start at the car. In the back, there's just no room. It, it, it looks like there's room, but once you get one of these big dogs in here, it it gets swallowed up pretty quick, especially if you need the seat to be reclined a little bit. So the, the front of the seat's gonna end up here. And so if one seat's in there, you know, someone could put one leg over there and their other leg can hang out on top of the, the battery box. And it's gonna be tight. So with it angled, when I measured, this is like the shortest, kind of adult seat I could find. I forget, there's like ultra shield seats that were like uh, for adolescent or like large kid racing seats, but I didn't really feel the need to spend the money on that. Especially since they weren't black and these will match the front, even though they're not the same brand. They're close, they're both, they're all black seats with white lettering. <laughs> so um, I think one of the saving graces if, you have, if I have a taller person in there that these cushions can come out pretty easy, just standard seat stuff. And they already came with the brackets attached, so that's pretty neat. So what I'm gonna have to do is figure that out. So the floor pan, it's pretty thick here and stuff, so I'm, I want, if you, man, if these were to line up, with these holes and then, you know, I've been pretty lucky with the build so far as you might've seen in the series. So we'll see what happens. As far as the harness bar, seat belt used to bolt there. So what I'm gonna do is build kind of a, a base plate there, have it come out here, have inch and a quarter tube, kind of go across and down on the other one, there's another bolt over there. I don't want to get into Devin's work here because it would just be a shame if I put my mitts on his beautiful cage work because he tagged the whole thing and it's inch and a half tube. I only have a bender for inch and a quarter and material. Well, actually I do have inch and a half, but I don't have a bender and I want to make the bends, you know, kind of go into the base plate there. So I'm gonna kind of mock this up and I'll show you Oh, so after kind of shoehorning that seat through here, it's not terrible, but I'm gonna just uh, adjust these brackets to get the seat lower back here and bring the bracket down here. 
So that should set it up a little lower. So definitely a small person seat. <laughs> oh, dang it. So, it went dark on me, but you get the idea. All right, it's a little better. But what's kind of gonna go on? And probably asking yourself, what are we gonna do with the other seat? Well, Fox could use another updated passenger seat. It has a really old racing seat from like the 90s and it's blue and this other the driver's seat is black so it'd be nice to have matching seats in there and these on amazon were shipped for 400 dollars. can't really beat that if you don't need an fia seat but still need something to um you know hold you a lot better than a stock seat would okay so it's been a couple few days had to deal with some subaru things truck things fox things just all the things except fusion things so I got this kind of mocked up and outlined in the front where I want it and with some two by fours and where it's all gonna kind of line up. So my next step, get around here and kind of give you a better idea, is to use some square tubing and make like risers for the back of the brackets here. I'll probably just I don't know if I can get to the bottom of this easily. I'm pretty sure that's a hollow cross member for the subframe. Uh, so I'll probably just end up welding plate and or a bolt to act as a stud for the front. And these brackets have a lot of a lot of holes underneath for a lot of adjustability actually. So I'm gonna make it happen. So. Got my square tube stock cut, and this just got a whole lot easier. All of where I want to bolt through or was gonna weld studs and whatnot, I have plenty of access. See, that's a little plastic clip holding the fuel line, so I got my bolts, holes marked out. I'm just gonna drill and bolt these things to the floor, I think, with some good washer and obviously grade eight hardware better. It'll probably be stronger than me welding these to the floor, to be honest. So I'm pretty excited about that, not having to dirty up the interior and get my weld on. So not too shabby. All right, back to my trusty drill mill. Got the holes for the brackets marked out, as you saw. Now I'm just going to basically shoot for the center of that. Got a bit that's bigger than the hardware we're going to use to clamp it. Just simple two holes. Bob's your uncle. Sweet. Both brackets are, brackets are in. And now I can shoehorn the seat to this very large open space with the roll cage. And it should be pretty much where I left it. I'll be able to uh, you know, obviously adjust it with the, uh, the slots and different bolt placements there. So I kind of want the top of the seat a little further ahead than that top bar. <sighs> if not, it's not a deal breaker. Uh, we'll just put some padding up there. And anyone that's riding in here should be riding a helmet anyway. Either way, there'll probably be some padding to go on there. So pretty excited at how easily this came about. So now the harder part is going to be putting a harness bar back there on the package tray. And after looking underneath here, these are super reinforced. So these bolt holes will work perfect for bolting in the lap harnesses. So as you can see, it's kind of in there. Uh, the rear bolt would line up right about there. The other side was a little kicked out. Um, that's pretty okay, but I was like, what is going on back here? <laughs> so I got room to slide this thing back. I was like, oh, perfect. I'll just unbolt it there. But then, yeah, that's bolted right to the floor. So that just means I get to stretch both my arms and reach the top and back side simultaneously again. So... It's a good and bad thing. After a little juicy fruit around, we got a rear seat. It sits 
pretty flush Oop. with the uh, the bar there, so I'm not really concerned about that, and that's about where you'd want it. There is still a little bit of a gap here. Obviously, that uh, dang it, I'm an idiot. But my buddy Max was five eight, and he sat in here fairly comfortable with his hooves on one side there and the other hoof over there, so it should be okay. And the the padding's out of it, I think, when he sat in there, so. So as good as it's going to get, I mean, not many drift cars have rear seats, so I don't know if any of you lucky viewers will be able to get a ride along, but uh, if you're short enough, you should be able to fit back here. All right, seat's been in. Now we're doing a little more fun stuff, I think. I always love messing around with suspensions, so got some new springs from BC. And what's on there now is a 10K spring, so they were super kind to send me some 14K. Now, I don't run a sway bar in the car. And I don't in the Fox either. The Fox has what's equivalent to uh, three metric guys, about a 14K. I would say it's a 700 pound rate spring. And uh, like I said, what's in here now is a 10, it says it on the spring in here somewhere. Yeah, it's easier to read on the other one, but it would say the same numbers with a 10 here. So 14K should put me at where a little more than what the Fox has. And I like how that drives. This is a heavier car, so it really needs a heavier spring without the sway bar. It, it doesn't feel like it in when I'm driving it. When I look at pictures and it just seems to have a, a little bit too much body roll going on. So, the 14K should help out immensely. Again, the <clears throat> strut body, coilover, no problem. Literally five bolts and it's out. Boom. So first thing I did was took out my adjuster and should be pretty straightforward. This spring doesn't have a whole lot of preload on it. So I should be able to loosen this collar and just Take it out from here, it seems pretty straightforward. Here we got the 10K spring alongside the 14, 12, what, what the hell did I say? 14. <laughs> and you can see just how many more coils, it looks to be thicker wire as well. So just give you an idea of what different spring rates look like and visually what they would look like different. So that's, it's a pretty big jump. Uh, since there wasn't any preload really, I don't think the ride height's gonna change. Maybe slightly. Uh, I did wanna kinda bring it up anyway, so if it does come up, sweet. If it doesn't, pretty content with that too. bolts a couple nuts later new springs installed couldn't have been easier so now what I'm gonna do is roll this thing back and forth let the suspension kind of settle out and check my camber and check my toe Put. Just gonna have to send up the steering wheel by adjusting the toe equal on both sides. It'll be good to go. Like I said, feels super responsive now. Looking forward to getting on the track next weekend at Honda Muscle Mountain Circuit for a vet adrenaline event. And I was gonna show you guys how I do the harness bar, but I want to get this content out to you. So that's gonna be kind of next week's project. 
and you'll probably just see that in a, a blurg in a future video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.